Hello, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Mila and I will be sharing with you a recipe for spicy pickled papaya. This recipe is um, inspired by my daddy, my tomato daddy, who um, is an excellent cook. So um, we are featuring papaya in this dish and that is our plant of the month. So I got to pick my own papayas and I have two small ones. There weren't any bigger ones, otherwise I probably would have picked a bigger one. And we're going to use them in its green form. But um, my father told me that you can use them like just before they turn ripe. So it has a different quality to it. So to make this recipe today, you're going to need green papaya. You'll want some chilies um, of your choice. I'm going to use um, red chili peppers and habaneros, some citrus. I have um, lemon and lime to taste, a little bit of garlic. Daddy Cruz recommended I use a white distilled vinegar, but I've also seen him use apple cider vinegar. We're going to have a little bit of sugar. I had some um, raw brown sugar on hand and a little bit of salt, and I was running out of salt, so I went and got um, pickling salt. So before we um, prepare the papaya, I'm just going to take my peppers, pop the stems off, and put them in the toaster oven to roast a little just to kind of release the heat. Um, I've seen my dad get frustrated because the peppers weren't hot enough and do them on the stove a little, but you could also do this on the grill which is really nice, but I'm not going to fire up the grill right now. I'm going to opt for the toaster oven version. So, Okay, we have this on my pan, and I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to start at about 15 minutes. Full toast. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start processing our papaya. Um, just a warning, it does have this like latexy white milky material that some people are allergic to, so just be aware of that. I seem to be fine with it. So you're going to go ahead and peel out, oh, and you see it coming out right away. Now this latex and the green papaya is full of a very specific enzyme, papain, or I mean papain, <laughs> which um, helps you break down protein. So papaya is full of nutritional and medicinal benefits, which I will share some of them with you, but through our school, we write plant blog every month, and we also do a video presentation, but I do encourage you to take advantage of our free resources, and it's just a great way to get to know a plant better. Right now, this is one of my favorite ways to get to know a plant as well because it gives me that connection to it in a way that just reading maybe might not. It's kind of integrating that knowledge and enjoying it in all of its sensational glory. So I'm going to go ahead and do a second papaya because I want to experiment with this recipe a little. So it was interesting to find out to me that um, the papaya is native to the Americas. So the tropical climates of the Americas primarily, and in my reading they said probably southern Mexico and Central America. Some people use the peel or the leaf. I read recently that you can take the leaf and kind of bruise it a little and wrap it around meat to tenderize it. Ricky Tree in his presentation spoke about if you're not into meat, that you can also use papaya, green papaya, or the leaf to um, soak in your beans to make it more digestible, which, you know, beans can make you kind of gassy. So, And I think that's an indication of what its properties are. It really aids your digestive system. So now we're going to take this and cut it in half, take the seeds out, and slice it up. 
Um, there's barely any seeds in here. It's got a white flesh right now while it's green. And so it doesn't have all the sugars as it does in its um, ripe form. And really in its green form, you can also um, cook it like a squash. And so in that way, it resembles a vegetable in this form. All right, I'm also going to take the insides here and scoop it out a little. So with a food like green papaya, I think it's fascinating to think about the journey it made from the Americas and how it was adopted um, and embraced in all these um, Asian Pacific Islander cuisines. You know, we think of um, green papaya salad in the Thai cuisine, tinola, the soup in the Philippines, and right now in Guam, we've got the pickled papaya. And there's all sorts of different versions of these all over. But before the mid-16th century, these wonderful plants did not grow in these areas. OK, so now it's time to slice our papayas. Um, Daddy Cruz said about a 16th of an inch, so I'm just going to um, slice thin. And these are very green, so they're a little bit harder than I'm used to. So one thing to take into consideration is even though the ripe fruit is very healthy, the green fruit, the unripe fruit, don't eat it if you're pregnant, okay? Because the green fruit is high in, in the latex and the enzyme that gives you... Um, that can cause uterine contractions. So even though I might be introducing to you and you're reading up on some of these um, remedies and traditions, just do research, you know, consult your medical professional as well. And put this to the side. Um, I've seen people use a mandolin if you have it you have nice, even slices, and it's per pretty quick. I do not have one, and I actually just really enjoy cutting. So. so as I'm cutting the rest here, I'm going to talk a little bit about the health benefits of papaya. Um, and again, I will connect you with the plant blog and another really great resource I found as well. But Papaya is full of great nutrients, including vitamin C, very high in vitamin C. Um, so it's an ally for your immune system. Um, we have vitamin A, and it's high in beta carotene. So it supports good eye health, preventing your macular degeneration, is what I've read. We've got folates, so um, the ripe fruit is actually can be very good for um, pregnant peoples because of the folate content and um, all the wonderful vitamins in there. Um, we have vitamin K, which uh, has important properties for blood, I think, and blood coagulation. But again, you'll have to, I'll connect a chart so you can kind of look at it. Um, and also full of great minerals, things like um, potassium, copper, small amounts of um, zinc. So preparations of papaya have been used to treat things like dengue fever, um, parasites, particularly um, intestinal worms, I believe. So you can see that it has kind of an overall cleansing effect. It's good for heart health, um, preventing arterial, preventing cholesterol buildup in your arterial walls. It's 
had some applications in like skincare, but some people have allergies to it, so I think that's being phased out. The seeds have interesting properties too. And they have kind of a peppery flavor. I just tried them. I wasn't so into it, but I, I'm, I'm willing to give it another try. Maybe find a good recipe for that. It's also been used for, as a man's medicine, if you want to lower sperm count, right? So just be wary of that too if you're using papaya seeds and you're trying to get someone pregnant, I would chill out on the papaya seeds for a while. So yeah, the peppers are ready. They're kind of smooshy. And I'm going to be very careful with them. I don't want to touch them, so I'm going to go look for some gloves because I kind of want to smoosh them into the papaya a little. And I'm going to transfer these into a bigger bowl because Daddy Cruz says it's good to almost do like a dry rub onto the papaya itself. So I am going to follow what he recommended. Okay, so I found this kind of ridiculously big glove, but that's okay. It's extra thick, so I'm going to transfer these papayas into a bigger bowl so we can smoosh things around better. And actually, I think I want an even bigger bowl. So just a moment. I've got my papaya my peppers. I'm going to begin by using a little of this salt and kind of just smooshing it around. Daddy Cruz said treat it like a dry rub. That's quite a bit of salt. And whew, that is potent. These are going to be some spicy pickles. So you can use milder peppers. You can use a very, very, very small amount of peppers. You can take out the seeds to make it milder. Um, I don't think the recipe will be the same without the presence of a little bit of spicy pepper. I'm going to use only half and then use half of this for another recipe. And maybe I should have taken out the seeds. I can feel this in my throat already. So I'm going to take these and rub them into my papaya. So these make a great snack food, or I also like to um, eat pickled vegetables on the sides of meals too to give certain things like balance. So I really crave pickles maybe because of the some of my Japanese upbringing, but there was a special kind of pickle that we would eat on the side when we would have um, Japanese style curry. And so now any curry that I have, I always want pickles. So yeah, so now we're gonna do our garlic and our citrus. And I think I'll just do a little bit and kind of taste it. Um, I am going to end up putting this in the fridge, but if I were doing the whole canning and pickling process, um, I would be mindful of my vinegar ratios. Um, Daddy Cruz said don't add water. I might add just a touch, but we'll see. So we're going to add the garlic for flavor and the citrus for flavor as well. If you use a papaya that's between green and ripe, you'll already have a little bit of sweetness to it. You know, Daddy Cruz used to make it that way and it was really delicious. Um, my papayas, I wanted to use the green papayas, but also I didn't have any that were starting to ripen at all. So we get what we get.
So spending time with my father, because I didn't get to grow up with him, was such a treasure in my life. I think one of the ways that we bonded was through food. You know, I think food is such a great sharing experience. It can also be a great way to connect with, you know, the plants that grow where you're from. It can be a way to connect with your ancestors. Um, I don't have that many connections to that side of my family, so all of it's very precious to me. And my father told me, you know, after the fact, after I became um, interested in herbalism and learning the ways of herbalism through the school, um, he tells me, oh, your great-grandmother was an herbalist in Guam. She was a midwife and herbalist, so my great-grandmother was a medicine woman. And that brought me much joy and made me feel like I was connecting to her without even knowing it. And I very much invite connecting with her in that way more. And I need to get my butt back to Guam. Okay, so it's not dry anymore. I threw in the citrus and the garlic and about a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of sugar. I might put just a little bit more in. Oh, you can really smell all all the pepper and garlic in here, the citrus, it's really coming together nicely. At least it feels like it. <laughs> All right, there I taste. Ooh! I think I can put in a little bit more pepper. It's gonna be delicious. I think it's gonna be delicious. All right. Ooh. I'm gonna put a little bit more salt and a little bit more sugar. So one thing that I learned from hanging out with my okasan, my grandmother in the kitchen, and something that a teacher of mine, Miss Miss Sabanda Greer, said: um, Don't prepare medicine or prepare food if you're in a crap mood. Don't put that yucky energy into it. So sometimes you probably can't help it, but if you're making a big batch of something and you're going to share it with others, um, you really want to, I think, you want to put love into it, right? Maybe you're being very intentional and thinking about the healing that you want as a part of this or thinking about all the wonderful nutrients and my grandmother said that the secret ingredient is love. So do not let this splash in your eyes. All right, I'm going to quit stirring it, and I'm going to carefully put it in jars. OK, so I have some repurposed jars here that screw on tight with lids. This is an old pickle jar. I peel the label off, and I'm just going to carefully, as careful as possible, transfer these delicious papayas over. Oh yeah. Looks like I'm going to be gifting some um, pickled papayas to some friends who like spicy things. Mm -mm -mm. The old jar in your armpit trick.
All right, so you may want to use very large jars, much larger than my standard ball mason jar. This old pickle jar is a little bit better, but I definitely need another big jar. Smash, smash. I think this will do just right. And we'll pour the juice on the bottom here as evenly as possible into our jars and then top off with our vinegar. Hope I have enough vinegar. Um, some, rep some recipes say it's fine in like four to five hours, but I kind of like the idea of letting it kind of stay in all these juices and let it all marinate together about a week, about five days at least, and then it'll be super duper delicious. All right, there we go. Line these babies up. and spicy. Okay, I have my hand back now. I'm going to do this big jar and fill it up. I'm going to do one where I mix it with white and apple. I'm going to do this one. Good old brags. Um, if you can find coconut vinegar, that's what my dad recommended. Um, I didn't see any close to me, but maybe next time I will search it out as I tweak the recipe down. Maybe get some. Um, I'm going to smush a fork in there and get some of the air bubbles out. Doesn't that look good? I am so excited. I hope it tastes as delicious as I think it is going to. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put lids on this. Thanks for joining me today. If you like, please hit like. You um, feel free to make comments below. Um, I will be doing more recipes, so if you have any requests, let me know. Hit a girl up. And again, I am Mila from the Florida School of Holistic Living. Um, if you're interested in taking an awesome foundational herbal class, I highly recommend Roots of Herbalism. Check out all the links below. Have a wonderful time. Let me know if you try this recipe and what you think. Mm -hmm.